Sunday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joyfully shout, all you on earth, give praise to the glory of God, and with the hymn sing out his glorious praise. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let all the earth kneel in his sight, extolling his marvelous fame. Honor his name in highest heaven. Give praise. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come forth and see all the great works that God has brought forth by his might. Fall on your knees before his glorious throne. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory and thanks be to the Father, honor and praise to the Son, and to the Spirit, source of life and love. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Day by day I shall bless you, Lord. Alleluia. I will give you glory, O God my King. I will bless your name forever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. The Lord is great, highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. Age to age shall proclaim your works, shall declare your mighty deeds, shall speak of your splendor and glory, tell the tale of your wonderful works. They will speak of your terrible deeds, recount your greatness and might. They will recall your abundant goodness. Age to age shall ring out your justice. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Day by day I shall bless you, Lord. Alleluia. Your kingdom, Lord, is an everlasting kingdom. Alleluia. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign, and declare your might, O God, to make known to men your mighty deeds, and the glorious splendor of your reign. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule lasts from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Your kingdom, Lord, is an everlasting kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. Alleluia. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises all who are bowed down. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hand, grant the desires of all who live. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. The Lord protects all who love him, but the wicked he will utterly destroy. Let me speak the praise of the Lord. Let all mankind bless his holy name, forever, for ages unending. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Lord, be near to all who call upon you in truth, and increase the dedication of those who revere you. Hear their prayers and save them, that they may always love you and praise your holy name. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and loving in all his deeds. Alleluia. Listen to my words. Give ear to my precepts. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of the Apostle Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by command of God our Savior and Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my own true child in faith, may grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I repeat the directions I gave you when I was on my way to Macedonia. Stay on in Ephesus in order to warn certain people there against teaching false doctrines 
and busying themselves with the interminable myths and genealogies, which promote idle speculations rather than the training in the faith, which God requires. What we are aiming at in this warning is the love that springs from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. Some people have neglected these and instead have turned to meaningless talk, wanting to be teachers of the law but not actually understanding the words they are using, much less the matters they discuss with such assurance. We know that the law is good, provided one uses it in the way the law is supposed to be used, that is, with the understanding that it is aimed, not at good men, but at the lawless and unruly, the irreligious and the sinful, the wicked and the godless, men who kill their fathers or mothers, murderers, fornicators, sexual perverts, kidnappers, liars, perjurers, and those who in other ways flout the sound of teaching that pertains to the glorious gospel of God. Blessed be he, with which I have been entrusted. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, that he has made me his servant and judged me faithful. I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man filled with arrogance, but because I did not know what I was doing in my unbelief, I have been treated mercifully, and the grace of our Lord has been granted me in overflowing measure, along with the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. You can depend on this as worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these I myself am the worst, but on that very account I was dealt with mercifully, so that in me, as an extreme case, Jesus Christ might display all his patience, and that I might become an example to those who would later have faith in him and gain everlasting life. To the King of Ages, the Immortal, the Invisible, the Only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. I have a solemn charge to give you, Timothy, my child. This charge is in accordance with the prophecies made in your regard, and I give it to you so that under the inspiration of these prophecies you may fight the good fight and hold fast faith and a good conscience. Some men, by rejecting the guidance of conscience, have made shipwreck of their faith, among them Hymenaeus and Alexander. These I have turned over to Satan, so that they may learn not to blaspheme. The grace of the Lord has been for poured forth upon me in great abundance, and has filled me with faith and love. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. All men have sinned and are deprived of God's glory. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. A reading from the Pastoral Guide by St. Gregory the Great, Pope. A spiritual guide should be silent when discretion requires, and speak when words are of service. Otherwise he may say what he should not, or be silent when he should speak. Indiscreet speech may lead men into error, and an imprudent silence may leave in error those who could have been taught. Pastors who lack foresight hesitate to say openly what is right, because they fear losing the favor of men. As the voice of truth tells us, such leaders are not zealous pastors who protect their flocks. Rather, they are like mercenaries who flee by taking refuge in silence when the wolf appears. The Lord reproaches them through the prophet. They are dumb dogs that cannot bark. On another occasion he complains, You did not advance against the foe or set up a wall in front of the house of Israel, so that you might stand fast in battle on the last day of the Lord. To advance against the foe involves a bold resistance to the powers of this world in defense of the flock. To stand fast in battle on the day of the Lord means to oppose the wicked enemy out of love for what is right. When a pastor has been afraid to assert what is right, has he not turned his back and fled by remaining silent? Whereas if he intervenes on behalf of the flock, he sets up a wall against the enemy in front of the house of Israel. Therefore, the Lord again says to his unfaithful people, Your prophets saw false and foolish visions, and did not point out your wickedness, that you might repent of your sins. The name of prophet is sometimes given in sacred writings to teachers who both declare the present to be fleeting and reveal what is to come. The word of God accuses them of seeing false visions because they are afraid to reproach men for their faults and thereby lull the evildoer with an empty promise of safety. 
Because they fear reproach, they keep silent and fail to point out the sinner's wrongdoing. The word of reproach is a key that unlocks a door. Because reproach reveals a fault of which the evildoer himself is often unaware. That is why Paul says of the bishop, he must be able to encourage men in sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. For the same reason God tells us through Malachi, the lips of the priest are to preserve knowledge, and men should look to him for the law, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Finally, that is also the reason why the Lord warns us through Isaiah, cry out and be not still, raise your voice in a trumpet call. Anyone ordained a priest undertakes the task of preaching, so that with a loud cry he may go on ahead of the terrible judge who follows. If, then, a priest does not know how to preach, what kind of cry can such a dumb herald utter? It was to bring this home that the Holy Spirit descended in the form of tongues on the first pastors, for he causes those whom he has filled to speak out spontaneously. I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners shall return to you. My tongue shall sing of your justice. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My tongue shall sing of your justice. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us pray. Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks.